Recently, the Roblox YouTuber Ruben Sim has gotten himself in a lot of drama and controversy yet again on the hellscape known as Twitter. This is due to the everlasting ongoing battle between him and the furry fandom. So yes, it's no question that Ruben Sim's clashes with the furry community has been a very long-lasting conflict online. I am a furry in my personal life. My persona is a protogen named Atari. He's also incontinent, so he has to wear a diaper 24-7. Sometimes things get a little messy if you know what I mean. <laughs> And it has racked up quite a lot of pushback against him from the masses of people on Twitter and elsewhere who vehemently disagree with his stance. Ruben Sim's mindset is that the majority of the furry community, like the overwhelming majority, like 90%, are, according to him, sexual degenerates, politics, and group. Either something about being a furry, or it's just the type of people that furryism attracts is just, uh... I'm sure it's some combination of, of things. I've noticed that, um, I think the idea of just, like, drawing animals or whatever, if your idea of being a furry is, like, having a dog profile picture and drawing animals, that's fine. But once you go past that, like, I'd say most fursuiters are yeah. probably, uh... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they're degenerates, but there's probably something odd about them that makes them, like... Um, maladjusted and unable to interact with the average person and beyond that yeah. within within the first suitors I'd, I'd estimate that and I said this on like Twitter the other day like 20 to 30 percent of them are probably like they, they either want to do things or have done things that would get them in jail for like years the pushback comes with people believing that Ruben Sim is unfounded in his accusation and should not be generalizing the community full of thousands of members and consisting of a lot of minors as, you know, sexual degenerates and groupers because he is generalizing the community based off an infamous minority. Now, before I have the Twitter hordes come out the woodworks to claim I'm homophobic or discriminatory to furries, or whatever lie they'd like to make out next about me, I'd like to clarify I do not think every furry is a pedophile. I am not staunchly anti-furry unlike other people, and I think furries are fine compared to a whole lot of other things I've bared witness to online. WAKE UP! WAKE UP! I take a slightly more grounded and realist approach in this situation, however I do believe there is a problem in the furry community which needs to be addressed regarding a long history of pedophilia and degeneracy, and that is certainly no secret to specify. As with every community there are certainly bad apples, but whether it's increased scrutiny or increased discussion regarding the furry community, it seems to be a slightly larger problem regarding pedophiles in it compared to others. <laughs> Let's join your lobby. Now for context. Now, there are numerous studies made regarding the prominence of immoral and gross paraphilias in the furry community, such as the prevalence of euphilic tendencies or polls regarding furry members' poor consumptions. But of course, I don't believe that every furry is immoral or inherently degenerate, and that's where the contention point comes in. With a comment Ruben Sim made on a video going over his Twitter furry drama from almost a year ago, he highlights how he believes a small minority of the fanbase are good furries, while the blatant majority like 90% according to him, are socially inept degenerates with a considerable percentage being people with addictions. A reply to him states how in the furry community, things such as purchasing NSFW artwork and creation of NSFW artwork creates a self-sustaining community and how the people rely on NSFW commissions and also creating that as a career or hobby. Now, in my opinion, I think in adult spaces, the facilitation of this content and the market for it is fine. It allows the community to continue, to prosper, and allows art feeding and allows for increased interaction and perhaps even increase in social circles. But the problem is when adult spaces like these have minors in them or cross into spaces involving minors. Obviously, like the people who have jobs based off of NSFW commissions, I'm obviously not going to like attack that. I mean, I'm a Roblox YouTuber. I'm not any better, but back to the main topic of the video. Ruben Sim's opinions on furries have been shaped by his endless horrible experiences with bad actors which are part of that community. The problem when it comes to the furry community is that every case of degeneracy with every bad individual involved is hyper-analyzed and gets extremely popular, with these people's actions being magnified to the masses and then being labelled as a furry and part of the community in such cases will get people to start generalizing the rest of the people in the furry community community based on the actions of a few others. 
thing. Please do not let one bad individual in a community make sure that that makes up your entire opinion regarding that community. You feel what I'm saying? Because I saw a lot of comments on that video of people showing a lot of distest and hatred towards furries on Roblox. Like, I literally am one. You're watching one right now. And I'm not that bad. <laughs> It's not incorrect to say Ruben Sim's opinions and judgement is completely unfounded. He has called out many furry degenerates before, and or brought light against their actions. Noble Dragon, for example, the Roblox head of moderation, was following furry NSFW accounts on his main business Twitter account, and Ruben Sim called this out in a video, and proceeded to be forever in Roblox's shit list ever since. So in the segment that I made for Bob, I explained the whole thing, made some jokes about it, and then I gave a monologue as to why it's probably not a good idea for the head of moderation at Roblox to be following a not safe for work account on his Roblox affiliated Twitter account. This was really the nail in the coffin for my alias. And from this point on, we're doing so much as mentioning my name on the site, whether it was on the forums, in game, or even like in your bio would get you permanently banned. And there's a lot of accounts in Roblox hell for saying Ben Simon on the forums. So this segment came out in May of 2016. It was over three years ago, and regardless, I'm still being banned by Bob to this day. Ruben Sim has also called out Juka, a popular furry Roblox influencer who was 22 years of age and crossed state lines and, and engaged in illegal actions with a 16 year old and is now in jail. People that want to talk about it and bring it here are gonna get banned, as simple as that. I don't know what to say except what's already been said. Feel free to unfollow and like Ruben Sim came in here. I'm assuming that was actually his Twitter or his Twitch. And I can ban him because he's just here to start a bit that I don't want started. So they can fuck off and find something else better to do. <laughs> Ruben Sim has also called out Andrew Wicker, also known as Mabucket, who was a furry artist who engaged in incestuous actions with his sister and killed a 14 year old. This 14 year old was also a furry and also self admitted to having sexually assaulted his 10 year old brother, and Mabucket was basically grooming them to become pedophile themselves, with the 14 year old furry stating that they would are with a child younger than 8. Mabucket was also a self admitted pedophile and a file. Hey! Post-production Ruben Sim here. I just wanted to point out that this Mr. Postcard character is believed to be the alter ego of Mob Bucket, aka Andrew Wicker, a notorious Roblox child who admitted to assaulting his younger sister, convinced a minor to their own sibling, and stated that a child's first experience should be rape because, quote, then they know what they're made for. Andrew was a successful game developer, having been paid many thousands of dollars by Roblox for his games, including the one named Grab the Child. Grab the child, many child to collect. Grab, Grab the child, many child to collect. Grab. It's an awesome game by yours truly. I don't get the unreal child. Here's Andrew posing at RDC with Roblox's CEO, David Bazuki. After being exposed, Andrew claimed to be leaving the internet to seek professional help, but in reality, the Cal for Blood account has been active as recently as last week. Ruben Sim also called out one of the most prominent Roblox predators, who was also a furry, called Cherry Paw. Many videos on them are now lost media, however they engaged in disgusting actions when they were 8 years old, and groomed well over 20 people. There are tons and tons of victims who came out about this individual. You can watch Green Lego Cat's video as well, covering it. But they believed it was legal to send a picture to a 14 year old when they were 20 and actively got off to cover. Another case which was brought up by Ruben Sim last year was when a grown man under a furry alias also kidnapped a child, which was about 13 years old, and this prompted Ruben Sim to go off against the furry community starting a large back and forth, which was his previous furry drama. Now, even from my position, I have called out many disgusting furries myself. XD Gamer 420, for example, uh, when when I was like 15 years old, this person posted animal abuse videos, CP videos, and gold videos, and I even made a video exposing them recently, and people have attempted to brush their illegal illicit actions off as trolling, despite their over three years of relentless cyber stalking they did towards me, even when I ignored them. 
Then you even have Hilo, who is someone who is still staunchly defended by their supporters, who literally signal boosted NSFW accounts on their alternate account, which was actively followed by miners, and posted blood furry fetish content and even furry butt cheeks, exposing miners to those degenerate images with no classification of that account ever being 18 plus. And then you even have the animatronic furry predator ring run by Gomi Reynard, a 26 year old man who actively defended and is dating a furry predator named Max who ERP'd with miners and did disgusting things with them, while Gomi himself has also made extremely suggestive artwork of miners' fursonas while he was 23 years of age and they were ranging from 15 to 16 years of age. He also ran an NSFW server in which allowed miners. Gomi Renard also actually responded to the allegations too by making a document in which in reality didn't address anything that I had stated in the video, therefore not actually addressing any of the allegations, but instead just linking XD Gamer's documents on me in which I've already addressed up to 30 times now I believe, as well as linking extremely poorly aged videos and inaccurate videos on me at some blatant failure of an ad hominem attempting to attack the accuser, which is me, rather than the validity of the accusation. The point in basically bringing this up anyway as I've gone on my tangent is basically just to establish how the perhaps somewhat twisted perception that all furries are bad came into fruition because of numerous bad actors saturated in the community in which have dragged the overall reputation of the furry community lower and lower. Then you also have users such as Kero and Hypnotist Sappho or ZR Kalo, which are much larger examples of furry degenerates outside of the Roblox furry community. But anyway, back to the main point of the video. After Ruben Sim's first Twitter back and forth with the furries many many months ago in which basically resulted in him making some satire tweets and basically getting mass reported for it, it has ensued once again. He basically made a tweet criticizing a popular Fortnite skin and made a comment stating, the reaction to this character is proof that being a furry is a sex like one thing. Now this tweet garnered him considerable backlash from people who basically view him as having fallen off from his whole lawsuit situation and of also expressed how his fan base have become increasingly aggressive and more bigoted, as well as him being more unsubstantiated in his accusations and spending more time arguing on Twitter about furries rather than actually calling out bad people saturated in the Roblox community, which is still abusing people to this day. Ruben Sim continued subtweeting about the situation and making more jokes about it because that's what Ruben Sim does. He cracks <laughs> jokes when it comes to these kind of situations. Like, it's funny, it's nothing new. Ruben Sim is literally known to crack edgy jokes jokes or make satire comments. Oh no, a plane just hit the fucking World Trade Center. Let's jump on Roblox and get the story. But Twitter being Twitter then respond by bringing up the situation regarding Ruben Sim which happened like 10 years ago in 2013. What Twitter normally tend to do in these situations is when a completely unrelated situation is currently transpiring, they attempt to pull a disjointed unrelated this you card in which this case is the 2013 situation involving Ruben Sim. Now the user who states about the image that was produced maliciously doesn't even mention how old Ruben Sim was at the time or even how long ago it was when this situation transpired to basically try and make the case seem that much worse. Ruben Sim in that situation was 15 years of age and this was literally over a decade ago. And in this situation, although it was certainly not right for him to do whatsoever, the context I believe was that the person who Ruben Sim depicted in his artwork ran a lewd art account themselves and Ruben Sim made that image image is some edgy joke. Obviously not appropriate and I'm not defending it, I'm just giving context behind it. Ruben Sim is literally 10 years older now and has very much moved on from that situation. That situation in no way whatsoever proves that he's a pedophile. It's just odd how people literally have to scramble 10 years into this guy's past to try and find some point of contention to use against him. Now another situation transpired where Ruben Sim replied to an individual stating how they followed two file accounts. This person replied with stating what accounts were two file accounts so they could unfollow them. Ruben Sim replies that the accounts in question were furry NSFW accounts. Now this opens up a completely different debate because there is a considerable amount of people who believe that furry NSFW art is earlier. 
However, the reception Ruben Sim got for this tweet was very much negative, with people ratioing him, stating, okay, which ones were the bar accounts? And people were asking him to be specific, and they were getting no valid answer. Then another person replied to him, stating, so in other words, you're accusing random people of being files for no real reason. You're actually a pathetic man child, bro. Just grow up and act your own age. Ruben Sim then jokingly calls this person a file, and he gets ratioed in the replies once again. So, I digress. I think these cases, especially on Twitter, it's best not to fan the flames, especially with those kind of statements or jokes, because they'll be very much taken the wrong way, and because it can hinder your reputation quite a lot, and your overall character is judged just based off of one Twitter interaction. So for example, all of Ruben Sim's major achievements and work when it comes to his videos and what he's done for the community, and how he's actively improved the Roblox community, such as him pressuring Roblox to actually adapt on their moderation skills, or calling out notable p***ers in the past such as Mr. Obvious is blatantly overlooked merely just due to the backlash he's been getting off of Twitter and some of the replies he's made regarding furries. It's crazy how all of that work and achievement and notoriety you can get from that is just like completely blown out the door merely over some joke comments you can make on Twitter. That's why it's best just to not be on Twitter. I mean, I've learned that the hard way. Then even more controversy continues even to the day of editing this video with users bringing up old tweets he made in regards to Kaneko Kin and Nafrix, also known as Natty Forsyth, also known as Natigska, also known as Scrimzox, regarding them not being pedophiles because they've had a three year age gap, in which is correct. The legal classification of pedophilia is five years, even though I'd probably say four years. Keep in mind too, this was before Ruben Sim ever knew what Kaneko Kin was doing behind the scenes with Napier miskeeping. And this was before we ever knew what Nafrix was saying with a 14 year old in a private YouTuber Discord server, as highlighted by Green Lego Cats in his video. In the video, Green Lego Cats highlights how basically Nafrix was being extremely weird and creepy to a 14 year old, and that's literally not defensible whatsoever. And if Nafrix was genuinely attracted to this 14 year old, then yes, that would be extremely and pretty pedophilic. Now with the case of Napi and Kaneko, that was a three year age gap and that was not pedophilia. However, a potential pattern was developing considering the things Kaneko Kin allegedly did with miskeeping, but I cannot comment on that just yet. That is miskeeping story to tell. Ruben Sim has anyway established that he's completely cut ties and does not defend those two individuals, Kaneko Kin and Nafrix anymore. But this is just a common case of people forgetting the definition of pedophilia and merely using the word as a buzzword. Ruben Sim was right in these statements. He was just unaware of the unknown context at the time and the other skeletons in Kaneko Kin and, and Nafrix's closets. The pushback still continues with unironic hate accounts made on Ruben Sim and yet a 19 year old furry going womp womp in response to Ruben Sim's tweet about the sharing of content regarding children facilitated by Roblox accounts, with once again Ruben making more jabs at the furry community based off this person who clearly made a very stupid, numerous stupid tweets about this entire situation. Overall, it's just a messy story, but to cancel Ruben Sim over these views is literally illogical. Of course, while his views about the subject may be inflexible and wrong, it's still partially grounded in some substance of reality. Group. Wow, the f of being eaten. Great. How do you develop something like that? What goes wrong in your childhood for you to develop a? a f wow, look, the second most recent member. His name is just Furry. You see, this is what I think of when I hear the word Furry. I think of Vor, Vor group, Furry, Vor, Fart Inflation Diaper Porn. I think of baby furs. I think of diaper furs. I don't think of nice people making art and hanging out at cons. The furry community in general is not entirely compromised of bad individuals. I think a large portion of Ruben's mindset comes from the fact that, you know, adults should obviously not project their fetishes on platforms or communities compromised of children. I mean, I've made videos literally calling out those kind of people before. There was like this spider guy who did the same in the Roblox UGC program. The furry community seems to just have a massive problem of having many cases of children involved in detrimental situations, and that's just the truth of it. This can be blamed on a severe lack of parental supervision. Parents quite literally do not monitor what their children do online anymore. There is no 
checking off phones and apps anymore to see what their child is doing or who their child is contacting. There's literally no background checks and frankly no internet safety lecturing at all anymore. Ruben Sim acts as one of the few people who even educate their audience regarding the dangers of the internet. The only others in this community I could guess is Green Lego Cats and Schlepp. I'd like to say that the purpose of this video is to accomplish two things. I want to get Mr. Obvious arrested and I want to warn others of people like this. And really, if anyone on Roblox or online in general contacts you and they're trying to get you to do sexual things or send photos or they're being really explicit with you, the best thing you could do is tell your parents. I mean, really. It, I know it's awkward and it's weird, but this isn't something that's normal, all right? You, I can guarantee you you won't get in trouble if, if you tell your parents about this stuff. They're going to want to check your messages, but keep in mind you're the victim of something if this happens to you. You have done nothing wrong. Your parents will know how to handle this better than anyone else. We need like way more people to really establish to their viewers that there are a lot of bad actors online and to basically just educate their viewers on how to know if they're ever being taken advantage of and to mitigate potential future victims and to also direct them to sites where they can report illegal behavior on and to also encourage them to talk to their parents about any situations that they have. Because if you're on the internet, you should obviously need to know about online safety. I said this during the Timmy situation but I botched the way I presented myself in that, but I've said it in a more mature fashion now. Many such cases of f***ing in the furry community is due to unmitigated degeneracy fueled by also a blatant lack of parental supervision. While I personally disagree with Ruben Sim's judgement on furries and the community as a whole, Ruben Sim's presence in the Roblox community is an overall net positive and he has done a lot more for the community than detractors let on. I know after this video I'm either going to be called an anti-furry or a homophobe or a Ruben Sim bootlicker or on the other side of the spectrum a Kuma supporter because this situation is pretty divisive and I'm a, like an internet punching bag right now. But I have shared my concise opinion and went over the entire situation regarding the recent Ruben Sim drama with him and the furries. And I just want to hear what you guys have to say regarding this situation down below. Because I know there will probably be a lot of arguments about this. And make sure to also leave a like and subscribe if you did find this video informative. And those are just my opinions about everything. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And have a great new year. Goodbye.